Hi, this is Dr. Brian Heberlin here with Lexington Ear, Nose, and Throat and Allergy, and I want to discuss a common problem that we see in the office, and that's tinnitus or tinnitus. That's a term that refers to a sound that we hear in our head or ears that really isn't there. The um, common description of that sound is a ringing or roaring sound, typically a high-pitched constant tone, but it can be uh, pulsatile, it can come and go, even when it's that high pitch when it's present. If it's in one ear or if it's pulsatile, often that uh, dictates a, a more thorough workup. Sometimes pulsatile tinnitus can be related to blood vessels or blood vessel related tumors. One-sided tinnitus can also be related to uh, a type of other benign tumor on the hearing or balanced nerve. And so workups for um, those two issues are often needed. For bilateral or, or tinnitus that you hear in both ears, that's most commonly related to hearing loss. Many times that hearing loss is high frequency and sometimes it's so high frequency that patients don't even realize that they have it, have a hearing loss that is. The tinnitus can be mild and not really bother people much or it can be very uh, distressing to the patients. Anytime the patients are uncomfortable, so if they have chronic pain or anxiety, often uh, the tinnitus perception is going to be much, much louder. We are a little, little limited on the therapies that we have for tinnitus. The most common things we recommend is what we call tinnitus masking. That's where we just have other sounds around to make the tinnitus less noticeable. Often it's worse when people are trying to sleep, so uh, having a, um, a sound machine or even just a fan on at night can be helpful in making people not hear the tinnitus because there's other external sounds around. Hearing aids can be helpful for it. Um, there's also medical therapies that are used in some cases, although it's not the most common thing that we do. There are a lot of um, herbal or supplemental medicines that are uh, out there, and really there's no good proof that any of those things work. It's something that's probably not harmful to try, but there's really not strong science or, or really any science behind many of these things. It's a super common problem that affects about one out of every um, six Americans. So there's like 50 million people in the United States with this problem. Because it's so common and our you know, physician-related therapies are limited, uh, there's a lot of things that um, I, I'm not sure how effective they are on the internet and, and on various websites. So just patients should be a little cautious um, when looking into different therapies and, and just know that they, they may not be something that works and it may be um, a method for people to try to take advantage of patients that have a, have a difficult problem. A good reputable website is the American Tinnitus Association, and that's ATA.org, who has a lot of great information about tinnitus and uh, some ways to help deal with that. People that have tinnitus that's bothersome should have a workup by a physician, and that's typically going to include a, a good hearing test by an audiologist. We are looking for things that are treatable. If there's hearing loss present and we treat the hearing loss, many times the tinnitus can, can get better and go away. If there are unilateral tinnitus or pulsatile tinnitus, again, that, um, that necessitates a workup looking for uh, different types of problems that could be more serious. Well, thank you. I appreciate your time.